Howdy everybody, Michelle here from Love to Loom, and today I am bringing you da, 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 the Rainbow Barf Kitty. Now, this came about because I had quite a few people message me a picture of a crocheted pattern that had been going around um, of a cat with rainbow coming out of his mouth. And the reason why I did not do that exactly is because the one that the crochet pattern is done. Um, it's done illegally. They took a copyrighted image, even referenced it in um, the page where they're selling the pattern, and they created a pattern and they're selling that pattern. That's illegal, okay? Anytime you profit off of something that is a copyrighted image, unless you are a licensed um, vendor of theirs, you can't do that, okay? Which is why I did not make this one remotely close to similar to that. Um, I use the same concept in a sense where it is looking like it's barfing out a rainbow, but the body structure and everything else is completely different. And I'm not selling this. I make it available to you guys for free. I'm just basically going to give you the building blocks, but it's completely customizable. So the one in the photo was gray. Obviously, this is not gray. I chose my cat, Turd, um, as my muse for this. He's a black cat, and um, I think if he could barf rainbows, he would. But thankfully, he doesn't. And in this video, I'm going to show you the whole construction of this as far as the building blocks and then how to put it together. Now, first of all, first and foremost, I always give credit where credit is due. I'm not one of those people that steal ideas and not give any credit no for the rainbow part i have to give a very big thank you to all of those great people over at tutelitz page for the um blanket that they do because i use the same concept for this um i'm going to refer you to their link but i will show a little bit on here how to do this because um with their videos they don't talk um, they use music and I know that we have some people that are, are um, legally blind and they can't really see the technique going on so it's sometimes easier um, to hear it verbally and walk them through the steps. So I'm going to you know, get started on that but obviously all credit goes to her and her gang over there for that. Um, the rest of this is just simple building blocks. So we're going to start with the ears. Now these ears are actually... Uh, six pieces total, even though it only looks like, you know, one, two, three, four. No, because I have OCD and I'm sure some of you do as well. <laughs> when you stitch the inner part, the pink on, on the back, you can see the little pink stitches and that drove me crazy. So what I did is I built one already. I'm going to move this out of the way. So this is one part of the ear here, one triangle as you can see there. Now I do four of these because two makes up one ear. So the front and then it'll have the pink on it and then the back and I stitch those two together to cover up the pink. All right, so this here, the great thing about this is you're gonna be able to use this, what I'm about to show you on anything else. If you wanna do a hat and put some ears on it, whether it's for a cat, whether it's for a dog, um, whether it's for a unicorn, whether it's for a bunny, whether it's for whatever you want it to be. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this. And the great thing about it is I don't like messy edges, as many of you know. And you can see here, it's nice and tight and very clean on both sides and all the way around. Um, I have seen some out there where they slip the edge and it still leaves it, you know, kind of loose and messy in my opinion. I just don't like those. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this, which is really simple. Um, again, this one I've already done. I need four of these total, but I'm only going to make one more um, and show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to move this one out of the way. Now, for the entire construction of the Rainbow Barf Kitty, I did everything with this simple baby hat loom. Now, this is the 56 peg. 3 8 gauge from KB Looms in their baby set. You get this for the hat and then you also get the smaller 24 peg for the booties. This is super easy to use. 
I did the entire rainbow barf kitty on this one loom. That's it. Okay. So the yarn that I used to make this year is Loops and Thread Impeccable in black. And it's a worsted weight yarn. It's a simple number four. There it is. Um, worsted weight yarn. My whole kitty is worsted weight. Now, the rainbow is Karen Simply Soft. There you go. Um, and this is a number four worsted weight as well. Now, the difference between the two, even though they're both worsted weight, there is a weight difference. And I'm going to show you, even though on the label it says it's a number four. So this one here is the impeccable. This one here is the Karen Simply Soft. And if you look, this one is just a wee bit thicker. Karen Simply Soft is, is pretty thin. I would say it's more of like a three and a half. This is a true four. All right. So that's why I didn't use this one, the Karen Simply Soft, for the body because I wanted it to, with the body, I wanted it to be covered enough that you don't see any gaps to where the color comes through when you have the rainbow tucked up in his mouth completely. All right. So that's what I brought that out to show you. But I'm going to show you guys now how to do the ears. Now, this particular part of the ear, we're going to cast on 11 pegs for the base. And then we work our way up to the point and we cast off here with a nice clean point. Okay. It's not loose. It's not messy. It's not bulky. None of that. All right. So for this, I cast on 11 pegs with a no crochet, a uh, no hook crochet. And the reason why is you see how you have like those double parts right here. When you stitch the two of them together, these actually are really good guides for when you're actually stitching it onto the body right here. It's really seamless as you can see. So let's get started on that. I'm going to cast on with no hook crochet cast on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making my slip knot. All right. Now I don't have to mark my peg or anything like that because I'm not using the entire loom. I'm just using for this particular part, I'm only using 11 pegs. So I'm going to cast on my first one. And anytime you've seen me do the no hook crochet cast on, I always put my finger on the back of the first one while I tighten it. Then I come in. And then before I tighten it again, I put my finger back on there. And the reason why is that holds that stitch in place because when you don't do that, it tends to loosen this up when you go to the next one. So with one hand, I do the next one. Then I can let it go because it's already secured now. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now for the last one, you're going to pull this in a little bit more and you're just going to take this loop and put it over 11 and pull it tight. Okay. And now you're cast it on. So with my hook, what I'm going to do is your cast on row doesn't count as a row. That's your cast on row. This is where you're going to start counting. You're going to purl and then knit, purl and then knit a total of six times. All right. So even though we've already casted that on, do not slip this last one, purl that last peg and all the others until you get up to the starting peg. And again, the reason why I don't like slipping the edge pegs is because, in my opinion, now people out there might prefer to do that. You know, I'm not the looming police. It's your cat. You do whatever you want with it. Um, I don't like how they look. I don't like that they're kind of uneven edges and loose, and I just don't like that. So... Again, this is completely up to you. I'm giving you the basics for you to follow. So we're gonna purl all the way up to the first peg. Couple more to go. And then once we get to the first peg, we'll be done 
row one. Now, if you have a, uh, a row counter or a scrap piece of paper or however you keep track of your rows, you want to do this for this so that way you know exactly where you are. So, purl that last peg, which is actually peg one. Make sure it's nice and snug. Now, what you're going to do is on the first one, you're going to unit pegs two through 10, we're going to e-wrap, and then 11, we're gonna unit. And the reason why we only unit the first and the last is that's what allows us to have this nice clean edge all the way around, okay? So I already united my first one. I'm gonna e-wrap two through 10, and this is row two that we're now working on. And the easiest way to remember this is purl is odd, knit is even, at least for me, in the direction that I go. It's, I find that it's easier for me, and I can, I mean, I can purl both ways, but it's, it's faster and it's easier for me to go clockwise with my purls. All right, so on peg 11, I unit, which is my last peg, then I bring the working yarn around in front, and I purl which is starting now, row three. And then purl all the way back to peg one. And I did a lot of trial and error with these ears. And the reason why I decided to e-wrap the, the center pegs is because when I did it with the unit, um, unit tends to be a bit tighter and it just didn't look right. And I went back and forth a couple of times on the width and it just really wasn't working for me. And when I switched to E-Wrap, I found that it looked a lot better and it built itself up much faster as well. And I went with that. And then it was a, it was a trial and error thing also with this one just doesn't want to pearl. Come on. Uh, it was a trial and error thing also with the pink on the inside because for this black part, we do um, 11 as our original cast on and then decrease. And then for the inside of the ear, I tried nine. It just wasn't enough. And then I went down to seven. So um, there you go. So now I'm back to my starting and I just finished three. So four, I'm going to U-wrap, excuse me, U-knit my first peg and then e-wrap two through ten and i don't recommend um e-wrapping a few at a time or going all the way across because i noticed that when i tried to do that for speed it tends to become very loose and with these ears you don't want that so patience take your time and trust me it'll look a lot better in the long run all right, and there's 10. Let me pull a little more working yarn here. Ugh, look at that yarn bark right in the middle of it. Um, and then my last one, 11, I'm going to unit. All right, so that's the end of three, or excuse me, the end of four. Now I'm going to start on five and purl all the way back to my starting peg. And I will say for those of you who are not big fans of purling, this might be a little um, difficult for you because I tried, and the reason why it took so long for me once I started working on this um, to get this completed and out to you is, I, as I mentioned with the ears, I did a lot of trial and error because I do know there's a few people um, that are not a fan of purling, whether they're like me, I have carpal tunnel, which is the reason why I have to wear my brace on my right wrist. Um, or they may have arthritis or, you know, it's just, it's very uncomfortable for them. And for the body, I, I had to end up going with a garter in a E-wrap to make it a little bit easier, but you will have to purl because all the other stitches that I've tried out there, um, to make it wear... It wasn't leaving a lot of gaps or a lot of holes to allow the color to come through or seep through. It just, it wasn't working. So that's why I ended up going with garter. Um, sorry for that, but there you go. All right, I'm gonna purl this last one and that ends row five now. 
we're going to do row six and row six is knit all the way back and then we're going to do our decrease so you knit that first one e wrap two through eight and then we do our simple decreases that allow this to come down to a point and look nice and clean all right and you knit that last one okay so now that's one through six back and forth on e rep other than the ends e reps and pearls now we're going to decrease so we're going to purl this first one Purl the second one. Purl the third one. And now we're going to decrease. So once that third one is purled, you're not going to pull it all the way tight. See how I have a little bit of slack there? The reason why is I'm going to come over here to peg uh, 10, pull that slack, bring 10 over to 9, and bring 11 over to 10, which is an empty peg. All right, so now you can see I have two strands here on nine and one strand on 10. And then I'm gonna continue purling all the way to my first peg and then I'm gonna decrease the other side. And watch your tension. You don't have to do really, really tight stitches. All right, and a lot of people tend to get really frustrated because, especially when they're starting out, they're not understanding that this hand or, you know, depending on what hand you use to guide your yarn, it's there just to do that, just to guide your yarn. You don't have to hold it really tight. Um, you don't have to pull it super tight unless I say, especially just with my patterns, to make sure to pull it, sure it up tightly, um, which is usually after I do my, my um, cast on for my starting peg. Just let your hand become your guide, nothing else. All right, so purling almost to the first peg now. All right, so now purling my first peg. And again, you're gonna leave that with a little bit of slack. As you can see, it's really loose here. I got some slack here. I'm gonna come over to two and pull that slack, carry two to peg three, and first peg over to peg two, which is empty. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like right now. We've reduced it down by one on each side. So now we should have nine casted on. So peg one has one strand, peg two has two strands, three, four, five, six, seven has one strand, eight has two strands, and then one on nine. Okay, so we've decreased that one on each side. And then we're just gonna repeat the six rows again. So you grab your working yarn, and now we just did row one. We're gonna do two, three, four, five, six, and then we're gonna do the decrease again. So go ahead and continue working. Go all the way until we're ready to come up over here on the decrease row, and then we'll continue from there. All right, so now I'm at the end of row six, and I'm getting ready to start to do the second decrease. So. Just like in the first section, we're going to purl the first three pegs. One, two, three. Come on, here we go. And when I pull that in, I'm going to leave just a little bit of slack, as you can see, some slack there. Now I'm going to pull that slack from the second peg, work it over to the third one and move the first one in to where that peg is that we just moved that other one. So as you can see, two strands and then one on the end. Continue purling back to the first and we're gonna decrease on the other side. This is what I love about having my nails being a little longer it actually helps me to catch my loop uh, when I purl there we 
go and we're coming up on the first one and when you purl this one just like we did um, on the decrease on the other side because we're going to move this one we're going to leave a little bit of slack pull out that slack over here on the one next to it move that one over to the third peg move the first one over to the empty one that we just moved and then shore it up meaning tighten that up a little bit and now just like before peg one has one strand two on the second three four five have one strand six has two and then one on this one now we just did row one now row two and all even we know are knit so you knit e wrap the ones in the center so grab both of those strands knit both of them off three four five two strands and then e wrap both of those strands and then you knit the last so continue working that until we come to the next decrease make sure i'm getting ready to start row three so make sure that you um continue that for six rows total and then we'll meet when we have to decrease again all right so we're coming up on the last one here we go so now we're going to start our third decrease and we're going to bring in one on each side so just like the previous two purl the first three one two three and then bring that in but leave some slack go to the one next to it pull that slack move it over to the third peg get on there and then take the first one and move it to the one that you just moved that is empty then continue purling to the starting peg And we're coming up on the first one. Curl that first one. Oops. And leave some slack when you pull it in. Leave a little bit of slack. You're going to go to this second one. Pull that slack. Pick it up and move it over to the third one. Take this one off the first one. Move it over to the second one that you just moved. Shore that up so it's nice and tight. And now we've reduced or decreased on both sides. So peg one is two, peg two has two strands, peg three has one, peg four has two, and peg five has one. And if you look, you can start seeing that nice triangular decrease. All right. So just like before, now we're going to unit the first peg. Grab both of those strands, e-wrap the ones in the center, and then you knit the last. And then continue that for six more times, and then meet me back here. All right, so I am, oops, hold on. All right, so I'm going to, there we go. Unit of that last one. And now we're gonna decrease in two more, leaving us with three pegs at this point. So again, bring your working yarn around and to the front, and then we're gonna purl the first three. remember on that third one just like all the others you're not gonna pull it tight you're gonna leave a little bit of slack there all right and then you're gonna grab that slack on this second one lift it up carry it over to the third one take the first one carry it over to the second one that you just moved then purl these other two And again, leave a little bit of slack. Pick that slack up from the second peg and carry it over 
to the third peg and now you will have three strands on the middle peg so let me just shore that up and then i'll show you guys all right so now we're down to three and on here we have one two so row uh, or excuse me peg one has one strand peg two has three strands and peg three has one strand and you're still going to do the six so you're just going to work these up really quick unit now for some that can't grab all three e-wrap um, grab two or grab one at a time however you want to do it and then you knit this third one and then purl back so that was row two now we're on row three and I'm not going to break for this one. I'm going to work right through it so you guys can see. Now we're going on row four. Remember, unit, e-wrap, unit. Then row five, purl, purl. And then purl and then row six unit e-wrap unit and now we do our final decrease we're gonna purl the first two since there's only three on here And then leave a little bit of slack grab it over here from the third peg move that over to two purl this first one lift it off and carry it right over here to that one peg so now you only have one peg with three strands on it okay now this is how we do the cast off what you're gonna do shore this up make sure it's nice and snug then grab all three if you can do three or you could do one at a time you're going to e-wrap with your working yarn and lift all three or one at a time over leaving just one strand on here but you're going to do one more e-wrap come on my fingers aren't working right now there we go and then you're going to leave yourself a long tail and then you want to leave about if you take your yarn and go across and then snip so now what you're going to do take your hook grab that one strand pull the yarn through it's going to fall off of there and it's going to look like this it's going to look almost like it's curling up that's okay so first thing you want to do is just shore this knot up make sure it's nice and tight then you're going to kind of stretch it a little bit and give it that nice pointed ear look and there you go so this guy matches with this guy all right it's like a little bikini top there we go now we use this with 11 pegs as the cast on and just to kind of give you an idea on the size of this so that's about two and three quarter inches across at the base and then three and a quarter inches yeah three and a quarter inches high all right so for the ears you're going to need two more of these so you'll need four of these pieces all together and then that was 11 pegs casted on and then you're going to cast on seven and make two of these which is the piece that goes on the inside right there now if you want that to be a little bit smaller then i would suggest going seven but no smaller than seven with this particular gauge loom Everything I'm referencing is referencing the 3 8 gauge loom. So um, the, the pink inner part, I did seven across. And then what you do is you get your needle, you stitch and, and leave long tails on this also. You're gonna get your threading needle 
and you're going to stitch this into that and then once that's stitched on there then you're going to stitch this piece on and you'll have one ear constructed all right so i'm going to show you how to stitch that as cleanly as possible and then that way you know how the ears are done all right so i moved my loom and everything out of the way what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the center part the pink part of my ear and start at the top you're going to thread your needle That's why you want to leave yourself a long enough tail. And then what you're going to do is before you actually darn it in, you want to center it to where you have enough show on all sides. All right. So that looks good to me. Now, what I'm going to do is take my hook and go not to the, to the stitch right there. I'm just going to go, I'm going to pull it back a little bit and I'm going to go to the one directly underneath of it. And the reason why is it gives it a better lay when it's already stitched it. All right, so there you go. See, it just kind of pulls right into it. Then you're gonna come through and it, it you don't want them too far apart, but it really isn't gonna matter too much with this because um, you won't really see where the stitches are because it, it blends, but you don't want it being loose enough that it could easily be ripped off either. And don't be afraid to stretch it a little as you go. It's totally cool. And just work it down the side and then I'll, I'll show you in a second. Here we go. Now, now that I am down here I'm gonna pull this one out of there and the reason why I put this other piece back here is because you don't want to see these stitches right and this covers it up nicely and it it feels a lot softer too so what I'm gonna do is this one now I'm gonna re-thread on my hook and use that along the bottom and the other side And again, don't be afraid to kind of move it around a little bit before it's completely stitched down. And again, you want to kind of pull it out a little bit and take it right underneath where it would lay. And that way it, you can't even tell where it's stitched in. And just continue stitching this all the way across. And this is the great thing about this is nobody's going to see if you have met messy stitches because they're going to be covered up on the back and you can't see them on the front. And just continue stitching this all the way around. Taking this right up to... The top. Sorry, I'm focusing. That's why I'm not talking so much. There we go. And this is where we started with the other one right here. Now, what you're going to do with this to tie this off is, oh, leave that. All right. You can grab a stitch back here that's, you know, black or pink or whatever you want because you're really not going to see it anyway. And then shore that up so it's a nice clean little knot. Take that off. I should have knotted this one off, but I wanted to show you guys. And do the same thing down here. So just grab the stitch next to it. It doesn't matter if it's a black one or not because, again, it's going to be covered up. There you go. All right. And pull that darning needle off. And, again, don't be afraid to kind of stretch it out and move it around. 
and that's the front part of the ear. Now, what you want to do is get your scissors and just don't cut it all the way down to the knot. Just cut it right about there so it has a little bit of a tail because you don't want it to come unraveled. A little bit of a tail and discard that. So that's what the back looks like right now. Okay, and that's the reason why I have you guys make extras. So it's kind of hard to tell because this is black. This side lays completely flat. This side, which is this side here, you'll notice where your your decreases was was were <laughs> I know how to word today it's got a little bit of a bumped area so I lay that down because that's part of my OCD all right so now you've sandwiched these two together and what you're going to do is take your darning needle Start on this side. Thread that through. Did I grab all of that? I did. Yay. Okay. And make sure you keep it pretty secure. Now, usually I would go top down, but in this corner here to get it started, I want to make sure that I go from the bottom up just to kind of make sure that they are tightened nicely. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go along the bottom. And the reason why is we're gonna use these two bottoms when we secure it to that piece. All right, and then just go like a mattress stitch, one side to the other. Don't go across because then it could be a little bumpy and messy looking, you don't wanna do that. Just take your time and just go edge to edge. Make sure it's seamed up properly. And this is where, sorry, that's messy Riley. He's so messy when he drinks water. <laughs> um, this is where it's, it's pretty forgiving um, when you stitch it together. So if you have like a little hiccup or something in the back, it's going to be hidden when you sandwich them together like this. All right. And now that one side is done. We're going to work on this side. Tuck that part in right there. It'll go as you work down to it also. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run it straight through the point at the top of each. Okay. And I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to pick up one of these other ones. Okay. This is why I said it's always uh, really important to leave yourself a long enough tail. So that way you don't have to have different uh, yarn to stitch them together. There we go. All right, so this side is done. Now we're going over here on this side. Hold them together. And we're gonna do the same thing because I'm this one in the back. I'm gonna come around to the front and stitch that through to the back. There we go. And then go from the bottom to the front one and work that straight down the line. And you don't have to be the perfect seamstress to do this. Like I said, this part's pretty forgiving. And trust me, I'm no seamstress. There we go. And then 
one more throw. All right. So I suggest now that both sides are done, and again, move it around, shape it, and it'll be just fine. Leave these on here. Don't cut them yet. Now tie them off together where the tops are. You can tie those too. And don't pull them too tight because you'll, you'll pull your stitches. So just tight enough. Okay. And then the same thing down here. There you go. And then what you'll do is once you get the body done on your cat, the clutch body, you're going to use these two. The reason why I didn't stitch this together is you're going to use these two sections to kind of cradle into that and then stitch it on both sides. So it's nice and, and neat. Okay. So that is ear number one. Now you're just going to repeat the same process for ear number two. You're going to make two of the black ears one of the pink so the black was 11 casted on for both black ears and this is seven and you're going to do the same decreases all the way and then construction putting the pink on first and then sandwiching the two black ones and then that way you don't see the stitches okay so that part is done now it's very similar for the nose and the eyes except it's just a smaller amount so I had extras that I did um, when I was going back and forth on deciding the color of the eyes. So for, for the black part, we cast it on 11. For this part, we cast it on um, 7. And for these, we cast on 5. And it's the same process. So you can see it's kind of like a small cone shape. Same thing. All right. So you're going to cast on 5 and decrease all the way down. And the same exact thing, you're just a smaller, uh, and these work up super quick, it's smaller amount of pegs, boom, 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 done. All right, so there's eyes and nose basically, done, out of the way. Now, let me move my darning needle out of the way, my scissors. For the body, um, your body is going to be determined by how big you make your scarf. So for me, I believe if I measured that correctly... Um, it's just eight, we'll say eight and a half, all right? But you can't always determine size on a loom. People make the mistake and they, they take their measuring tape or whatever and they, they go like this and then they go, oh, okay, I got, you know, like 22. No, you don't. You don't have 22 inches, okay? Because what happens is while you're looming something up, it's stretched, so as it relaxes, you can see it comes in and it's smaller. So what I'm going to do is explain to you how I did my rainbow. I used seven pegs for each section. So seven times six is 42. And that gave me eight and a half inches. But I don't want to go by inches in this case because if I measure eight and a half inches on here, it's not going to give me the eight and a half inches I have that it's already worked up. So this is where I made the mistake when I wasn't paying attention. I was really tired and it was already late when I cast it on for the body. I cast it on the entire 56 pegs and I should not have done that because I only used a total of 42, you know, total seven pegs and then I connect them together and this is, you know, 42 total. I should have only done... Um, you want to give like an extra four pegs on each side just to kind of give you a little bit of buffer so it's not really tight in there. I mean, if you want to go and do like 46, two on each side, that's fine. Um, but if you're going to do the size that I did where you're going to do seven, you want to add an extra four peg buffer on each side when making the body. So ideally what I should have done because I used 42 for this, I wanted to add um, four more for each side. I should have only cast it on 50 instead of the entire 56. That's why this side is a little bit bigger and it kind of threw me off. So keep in mind, if you use this one and you like this width, 
which is the eight and a half that I have. You're going to cast on 50 on this particular uh, gauge loom, which is a 3 8. Whether you use this or you use one of the other KB looms that's 3 8 gauge, um, you want to cast on 50 to have the accurate size body for this scarf. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, this body, I, I did a lot of trial and error and worked a couple of different stitches because I wanted something that it was going to hide. You can't see the colors on the inside of this because I used the garter stitch with an E-wrap instead of a U-nip. And it hides that color because you definitely don't want to see the rainbow inside unless you're on this side. So even on this side, you can't. I mean, you really have to stretch it out. But for those of you that don't like to purl, I'm sorry. But to get this where it has that the complete coverage, you're going to have to use a garter stitch. Sorry. Um, and, uh, and then what you're going to do is once you have your width, then you're going to double that. So if you, um, you made it, it should ideally come out to about nine inches wide. Then what you're going to do is 18 inches long. So you already cast it on 50. That's going to give you your width of about nine inches wide. Then you're going to make it twice as long so you can fold it over and do the clutch the way I did here. Let me tuck this all the way up. Okay. So to get this part here, not the width, but this part here, you're going to have to go twice as wide as you did for the length, the width of your scarf. So if you're doing nine inches for the width of the scarf, you're going to go 18 inches because then you're going to fold over, fold over and then you'll have this gap here. And then on the inside, once you're done your rainbow scarf, you stitch one end of the scarf on the inside here. You can see that it looks like a little tattoo on the inside of his lip. And then the scarf length is whatever you wanna do, okay? So as you can see, this one just keeps going. So this one I actually did, uh, I'm, gonna keep for myself. I didn't do a full length scarf on this. I did a little over three feet because I'm not gonna wear it as a scarf. I'm gonna keep it on um, my shelf. And, um, but the scarf, again, it's completely up to you as far as the length. If you wanna do a full size scarf, depending on who you're making it for, the, the length is completely up to you. That's why I said this is completely customizable to however you want to make it. Um, if you want to make it like I did mine, where you just want to keep it or maybe gift it to somebody as like a pillow or a child or something like that, you can totally do that as well. And um, so once you have your, your length, your 18 inches or so, you're just going to fold the top part down, the bottom part you're going to meet in the middle, and then you're going to seam the sides and then flip it inside out. And then that gives you this nice clean seam here on the sides. Because if you don't, you're gonna see the stitches on the inside if you don't flip it inside out. And then you're just gonna attach your nose. Now, I wasn't worried about my stitches on the inside because nobody's gonna stick their face in there. And the same thing with the eyes, you're just gonna stitch on the eyes and you sew in your little whiskers. And it's that super easy. I know mine looks kind of crazy, but you know what? I'm, I'm kind of crazy too, so it's okay. But it's that easy. So let's do the rundown again. Ears, super easy. Do four of the black pieces, two of the pink pieces. Stitch them together. Two for the eyes, one for the nose. Sew your whiskers. Build your body, make your scarf. Now, um, I am going to have this written up as well because I did kind of go through this a little quick because it's really that simple. But I will have a link to um, Tootalit's video on how to make the, um, the striped blanket, which is the same technique I used for this. 
and that's it. So of course, as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook. If you're not in the group, you're more than welcome. Just search for Love to Loom. Uh, you'll find us in, in Facebook. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. You can email me. So I'm always available to answer any questions. Happy looming, guys.